Good day, dear colleagues. Uh, it's a great honor for me to present uh, another clinical case. It's also from the uh, Petrov's Institute, Kansas Institute uh, case from the chemotherapy unit. So it's a young woman, as usual, in this case, 24 years of age. By the time of uh, initial process of verification, the disease started in uh, uh, in September 2010, when she miscarried at uh, five, six weeks of gestation. And uh, after the um, curatage, the patient was uh, uh, discharged. But in uh, uh, six weeks, she again uh, developed uterine bleeding. With this son, she was admitted to the city hospital, where uh, uh, there was uh, unsuccessful uh, attempt to stop the bleeding, uh, which resulted in uh, hysterectomy, uh, total hysterectomy, and histology by that time, histology verified invasive uh, trophoblast, but no one actually recommended to these patients to, no one referred her to oncologist, and the ACG was not uh, tested for. And then she progressed further. In uh, 18 months later, it was February 2012, she manifested uh, neurological uh, symptoms uh, like uh, in increase in uh, intense uh, headaches with increased intensity, left hemiparesis, and so forth. And she was admitted to the ICU of one of the city hospitals, in one of the city hospitals. So, on admission, they did brain MRI uh, and uh, on MRI, you can see massive hemorrhage, massive edema in her right temporal area. And uh, because of emergency indications, uh, she was uh, uh, she had uh, decompression craniotomy, uh, removing hemorrhage areas, uh, areas which were, uh, so to say, found, which were detected. So. Uh, after that, the patient uh, improved a bit, but in another week, she worsened with, uh, with uh, so to say, negative neurological symptoms, with convulsion syndromes, impaired uh, uh, speech, and uh, uh, coma. Uh, again, surgery, uh, another craniotomy, removing uh, bleeding areas in her, from her brain, and uh, she and extremely, uh, the patient was in extremely severe status, stayed in the ICU. By that time, since no one of the doctors could even uh, assume that it's a trophoblastic disease, she uh, was in a critical status. She was, uh, she had coma, grade two, on was, uh, mechanical ventilation, with severe anemia, with gamma drop up to six uh, grams, and her diagnosis was still unclear. And only after the, uh, uh, clear after the collection of the taking her uh, history, uh, they found out that she had uh, they had a bleeding and a hysterectomy. Then the trophoblastic disease was uh, su suspected, and a huge ACG increase was detected 115,000. First time we saw these patients uh, in coma uh, when she was in your uh, neurological issue. And of course, we uh, were in doubt what should we start treatment, what to do next. But uh, we took that risk. We started to risk uh, this patient in, um, as a uh, treatment. We decided to first use the metotrexate with a rather high dose, thousand, uh, so one gram per square meter. It was uh, a daily 24-hour uh, infusion every two weeks, and so three sacks of chemo were done. After the first treatment, uh, the uh, patient improved, uh, uh, so no sense of coma. Uh, uh, so she st after second cycle, she started to move, walk, uh, write, uh, uh, draw. Uh, so thus, three cycles of chemotherapy were done. ACG dropped to 1,000 units per mil. And uh, uh, in case of complication, we saw only some hepatotoxicity with elevated uh, transaminases. And then uh, we decided uh, that uh, we have to intensify treatment. And treatment and patient was switch, uh, was uh, transferred to our center with such clinical diagnosis. Her diagnosis was uh, the follows. Trophoblastic disease, uh, uterine uh, coracoceroma condition after uh, hysterectomy, metastasis in her brain, uh, 
uh, condition after two decompression craniotomies, uh, was uh, uh, treated with a uh, patient with cerebral stotrexate, and it was a group uh, with uh, high, high risk of the relapse. After the patient was uh, brought to our clinic, we did a CT scan. Uh, she was more or less fine, and uh, we found metastasis in her lungs, spleen, and which was uh, really uh, uh, astonishing. We saw the structure, uh, the mass in her left uh, atrium. It was a floating clot. So we did uh, echo CG, and the echo CG showed that in her left uh, uh, atrium there was a floating clot occupying almost the whole volume of her left atrium. And again, we, uh, we started to think what we can do next. But uh, we risked once, so we decided to risk again because a uh, cardio surgeon who consulted us, he refused of doing surgery and he refused of uh, some bectomy. Uh, because of that, uh, because of her disease, but we decided to uh, take this risk. We, uh, we saw with this young girl since May 2012. We switched her to MRCO. It was standard regimen with standard uh, dosing. In total, six cycles were done. After three cycles, her HCG uh, completely normalized. Six, four, five, and six were done as a consolidation treatment. Her treatment uh, effect was absolutely uh, astonishing, complete regression with complete uh, marker uh, restoration to normal. That is her brain MRI. Later on, she underwent two reconstructive interventions to restore her um, uh, skull integrity. That's her complete regress, uh, complete response in lungs and spleen. Can we come back? Can we? Uh, and here you see her complete response uh, with this uh, clot uh, structure in her heart. And if you look at the whole uh, so the history of the patient, her disease started in uh, 2010. In July uh, 2012, she completely regressed. She is alive uh, in complete remission. Uh, she's socially active, so of course she has some neurological deficit, but still she's absolutely uh, socially adopted. She has a, a nice uh, daughter, and everything's fine. And as a conclusion, I would like to say that only due to the most effective uh, chemotherapy regimens and uh, accurate following the treatment algorithms, depending on the uh, risks, we can be that successful and the uh, price of uh, lack of experience or uh, lack of knowledge is actually the patient's life. And what is the final ECG? Uh, 0.1.